Roasting a brand new coffee is nothing new for a home coffee roaster. We're constantly roasting new coffee. In this case, I'm roasting a coffee origin and process combination that I've never roasted before. I'm going to share that with you here on this video. We're going to be doing this roast together, putting together a plan, executing the plan, and roasting the coffee, and hopefully tasting the coffee as we do this together. So let's do it. Stick around. All right, thanks for joining me today here at the Virtual Coffee Lab. We're going to be roasting a Brazilian natural coffee. It's been a long time since I've roasted a Brazilian coffee. I tend not to gravitate towards them just because I tend to enjoy Central American coffees and African coffees a little more. And so that's just personal preference. That's exactly what home coffee roasting is all about. We find something we like and enjoy that. But uh, yeah, so we're going to be roasting a Fazenda IP Yellow Bourbon. It's a natural processed coffee. And in this specific instance, they mentioned that it can be out laying out drying for as long as um, 20 days or so drying this coffee. So there is definitely going to be a little bit of fruit that is attached. Uh, literally the mucilage, uh, some of that is attached to the seed during the drying process. And the uh, flavors of the cherry carries over into the roast, into the cup. Uh, and that's one of the things that I like about a natural coffee. I enjoy that. So a little more about the density of the coffee. Uh, here is a picture of it. That's one of the things that I like to do when I get my coffee, uh, green coffee, is I look at the seed. And in this case, you can see right here that this seed uh, is a medium to smaller size seed. It doesn't have a super tight line. You can see where the uh, seed kind of splits open there. It is a little bit on the wider side, which kind of is a clue that this is not a really high density coffee. Also the altitude, uh, I think 1200 meters is at uh, 3600 feet, I think. That's not really high altitude coffee. Uh, some of the high altitude coffees will be uh, anywhere from 4,000 to 6,000 feet. And so because of that, the, it doesn't get as cold at night. Uh, the seed grows quicker. It tends to be less dense. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure it. And I already did measure it. Uh, and I'm going to share that with you here. And I have a video on how to measure the density of your coffee at home. You can check that out. It's really easy to do. And you weigh that out. And I did. And the weight of that was... 179.4 grams. I divided that by 250 because that's the volume of that cup is 250 milliliters, 250 grams, 250 milliliters. And that gives me a number that I multiply by a thousand. That number was uh, 717.2. So this is on the edge, very edge, of being between a medium density and a high density coffee. All right, so why is density important? Why does it matter to the home coffee roaster? Well, for me, I care about density because I want to know how much heat I can apply to this bean during the roast. A low density coffee is going to be more prone to roasting defects. It can't handle the heat uh, like a high density coffee could. So I'm going to have a lower charge temperature that I would normally use because I'm roasting a medium to medium high density coffee rather than a high density coffee. Most of my coffees are in the high 700s and uh, I don't have to worry about roasting defects very often at all. But I want to be careful also because it's a natural that's another reason why I want to be a little more careful with my heat while I'm roasting this coffee. And so rather than my normal charge temperature range that I would use for a high density coffee, um, I'll use the temperature of 385 degrees. Instead, I want to charge this roaster at probably 370 degrees 
That way I've got uh, less heat being applied to these beans and I'll have less chance of roasting defects. All right, so that's part of my roasting plan is my charge temperature. What is my goal for this coffee? What type of a roast do I want? Do I want a light roast, a medium roast, a dark roast? Um, what temperature am I going to take this coffee to? We all are going to have different temperature outcomes on our roasters. So I'll be talking in terms of my roaster here. For me, my ending roast temperature for a medium roast is going to be about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll put the Celsius on the screen right now. And that I will go from anywhere from 395 degrees to 402 degrees on this roaster for most of my roasts. This roast, I'm going to go probably on the low side like that. That's what I'm hoping. So I'm probably shooting for a 395 degree drop temperature. All right, so now that I know my drop temperature, my total roast time for this roast is also another factor that impacts flavor in the cup. I'm looking for some of that excitement that they talk about. So I want a roast that's not going to be long. And I don't want a really short roast because I know that if I have a short roast, it requires more heat. And I'm kind of limited here with this coffee. So I'm looking at a 10 minute roast, total roast time, drop temperature of 395 degrees. And so breaking that down in a 10 minute roast, I would love to hit dry by five minutes. I, I would really enjoy that. And I would be happy with um, a three minute to a 315 browning phase or Maillard phase, and then a, a shorter percentage, a shorter time in my development. So maybe a minute and a half in my development um, and all of this with the drop temperature of 395 degrees. So that might be a little tricky. We'll see if we can do this. What I'm looking for is a beautifully, um, a beautifully roasted coffee that has a little bit of a hue to it, a little bit of that uh, red hue in the color, and I don't want it to go dark. I, I want this coffee to have enough development to, for all of the flavors that I want, but I don't want the roastiness in this coffee. So, so that is my goal. That's kind of what I'm thinking, and we're going to try to execute that. So let me get the roaster warmed up, and then we'll talk about the next step. All right, my roaster has been warming up now for over a half hour. I am getting ready to charge my coffee at about 370 degrees. I've got one pound of coffee, which is, what is that, 456 grams, something like that. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. Charge. Okay. All right, charge the roaster at 371 degrees. I'm gonna turn off the gas and let this exhaust temperature drop. We'll watch the bean temperature drop here on uh, as we head towards turning point. All of this is going to give me an idea of how fast I'm roasting this coffee. I know that I don't have too much heat applied because um, I know my charge temperature is 15 degrees lower than it normally is, 15 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, I'm getting ready to turn my heat back on. I'm watching my exhaust temperature right there, and uh, 375 degrees is around where I want to turn my exhaust temperature, I'm sorry, turn my gas on so that my exhaust temperature will turn around and start heading up towards around 400 degrees. My exhaust temperature is my gas pedal. Uh, sure, my gas gauge is my gas pedal as well, but my exhaust temperature is something that I really pay attention to. All right, we are at about 65, 70% uh, energy right now on my gas gauge here. And we're gonna go up to full power right now. All right, so we're at turning point. Turning point's gonna show on the screen. It should be about a minute and a half or a minute and 28 seconds. 
a minute and a half at 268 degrees. I'm right on target the way that uh, I know my temperatures. I'm very familiar with the roaster. So I look like I'm headed towards uh, about a five minute dry. I could be a little bit late on that uh, or I could be a little bit early. It all depends on the coffee here. All right, my rate of rise is skyrocketing. I don't know if you can see the beans real good. I think you might be able to on the um, other camera. Yeah, so right now Artisan's predicting a five minute and 20 second dry and I'm at 17 on my rate of rise. So I'm gonna be close to five minutes or maybe 455 even uh, based on the bean the rate of rise, uh, which now is at 20. So yeah, there we go. So I'm right in the zone of where I want to be on my dry end, which is exactly what I was hoping for. That's all good news. Let's take a look at the beans. You can see just now that they're just starting to pale. They start to go from that dark green to a little bit of a lighter colored green. And that's what we want. We want to see this transition from this darker green to uh, a full yellow. Uh, and that's what we call dry end. All right, so we are right where I want to be. And we, let's talk about the exhaust temperature for a second. Right now it shows 392 degrees here on Artisan. And my goal of 395 degree drop temperature, I would like to have my exhaust temperature be about 400 degrees to 405 degrees in that range uh, when I'm close to dry end. So I'm going to be watching that. And why? Why am I doing that? I'm doing that so that I have enough energy to move me through the roast without being out of control. And I'm using that, like I said, as my gas pedal, um, so to speak. And I want that to level off. And then I'm going to start to slowly back down the heat as we um, work our way towards first crack. But let's get to dry first. All right. We are definitely starting to yellow. There's a little bit of green left in there. Still some green. I it's hard sometimes to tell and so for me I don't want to see any green I'm still seeing a little tinge of green there's some green and we are just about there I'm gonna call it dry right now all right and we're at 407 degrees on our exhaust temperature so I am gonna definitely back off my gas I'm down to a half a kPa right now my exhaust temperature is going to start flattening out and I'm going to start increasing my air from a minimal draw to a medium draw on my roaster. And I'm not concerned about the squiggly lines on my rate of rise right now. I'm just trying to get a stable descent and I'm going to use my exhaust temperature to kind of help me visually see that. And I'm gonna let the descent take care of itself. I don't have 100% confidence in all of my rate of rise readings as far as, you can see how the line's going up and down and up and down. And I need to get this energy down just a hair. So you'll see these little roller coasters going on and I'm looking for a general direction. I'm looking for a general direction for this roast. A couple more adjustments. All right, so naturals have a little bit of uneasiness. I'm definitely moving a little quicker than I want on the roast. This is kind of hairy doing this while I'm recording. There we go. Okay, so things are going well. 
Did you see the color? Look at the color on this. Kind of a cinnamon. It's kind of hard to tell. But, um, yeah. I'm excited. I don't know if you're seeing that in the camera. I'm excited about this coffee. All right, my exhaust temperature has leveled off. 405 degrees is nice. Um, I'm looking now at my first crack. I want to back my heat down just a tiny bit more. Definitely more. I've got a little flick going and I'll have a little bit of a crash going and then it'll kind of come back and go back into its descent. All right. Just making really, really small adjustments. Just now, so you can see my exhaust temperature is starting to angle down. Look where the bean temperature and the exhaust temperature are pointing at each other. That's right about the 10 minute mark where they're gonna converge. So I like that. I like that. First crack is gonna be coming up here at about five degrees. And I wanna get my exhaust temperature down. I'm gonna bump up my air to about a medium high. That's gonna start to help move this around. And crack. It's quiet. First crack. Get my temperatures down. I really want to get my temperature down. And I don't like how that just bounced up like that. First crack is now rolling, but it's not rolling crazy. And I'm gonna really back off my gas. And I'm gonna start looking here. Let me start to smell. And uh, it smells good. 392. I'm going to turn off the gas. I'm really close. Turn on my cooling fan. Just to hang on there. And I'm going to drop it. You can hear a few snaps as it comes out. There were a few beans that were still cracking when I dropped it. A couple days have gone by since we roasted this coffee. It's had a chance to rest. Before we get into looking at the profile and tasting the coffee, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. I've done that with most of my videos. It really does help the channel out overall. Also hitting that like button, that would be awesome if you would do that. Enough people watch these videos, we can definitely get well over 100 likes on this video. I would really appreciate that. And that, when you do that, that helps this video get seen by more home coffee roasters like you. So you're helping out your fellow home coffee roaster when you do that. I was able to hit my charge temperature uh, almost exactly where I wanted it. I wanted 370 degrees and it was 371.2 degrees. I'm fine with that. One degree is not going to make a difference really. The uh, dry time, five minutes, we were at 448. I was about 10 seconds early, but that's fine. Uh, you know, the dry phase and why the dry phase is so important, I think one of the biggest reasons is, is it sets me up for success for the rest of the roast. It is more or less a way for me to stay in control when I get from dry and work my way down to first crack. I'm, for the most part, in control. I've got a video on why the dry phase is so important. You can check that out. I messed up on that roast and I learned some things from it. And I, um, it, it all happened kind of in real time, kind of like this video. So you'll get to see my mistakes and, and talk. we talk about it. So check that video out. 
And then from the dry time down to first crack, I think I said three minutes to 3.15 was my target time to first crack, and it ended up being three minutes and 33 seconds. So I was about 18 seconds longer than I wanted to be. Um, so that would have been that would have been better to have that be a little shorter. Um, my development um, percentage was spot on. It was about 14%. The development time was a minute and 21 seconds. I'm okay with that. Um, maybe a minute and 30. But the two things that I wish I would have been able to change would be to have a lower drop temperature. I wanted 395 and I dropped it 397. And then my total roast time was 942 and I wanted that to be uh, about 10 minutes. So I think I could kind of fix all of this if I would have kept my temperatures down uh, instead of having these flicks. I think I could have got a little closer to my goal and that would have stretched the roast out. And there's a couple here that I'm going to just circle that more or less will show you where, um, where I could have probably done a better job. Okay, so we haven't really tasted the coffee yet. We're going to do that in just a second. But looking at, at this, this is a great starting point. From here, I'm close enough, I think, where I can, I'll taste the coffee and I'll know maybe if the changes that I just talked about might help the coffee or maybe it might be right on. I might be really happy with it. And then all I need to do is get a little better with the uh, flicks and crashes on this roast. Uh, this is the color of the beans. And I looked for roasting defects. I didn't see any facing, any cratering, any chipping or anything, or even tipping. I didn't see really anything like that in the beans. And overall, I think I'm really happy with the color. The color seems to be on track. This is what it looks like here in the grinding dish. And then I've got a picture of it ground that I'll also, here it is on the screen. You can check that out. I'm happy with the color. I weighed the coffee before and after the roast to determine the moisture loss. 453.7 grams, that's one pound, uh, was our green coffee. And then 394.9 was the total roasted weight of all of that coffee. And that equates to about a 13% moisture loss. So this definitely falls into the medium to medium lighter roasting level. Let's go ahead and go in for the taste and see how it is. There's definitely a juiciness to this coffee. I'm really happy with the acidity. Kind of a puckering, just a little bit. There's definitely earthy, dark chocolate note. There's a nice, pleasant sweetness. It's not a bitter cup at all. And I'm getting a real uh, strong nuttiness. It really tastes pretty good. It doesn't have as much of a berry note. I was expecting more of a berry note. Uh, I don't really taste any sort of defectiveness. I don't taste a roastiness or a char that's in the cup. It is a lighter bodied coffee. If I had this every day, I'd be happy with this coffee. It is not a, uh, this is not a coffee that I'll remember forever. One of those types of cups, but this is really good. I'm happy with this roast for the first time. And I'm excited to see where I can take this coffee next. Share your thoughts and comments about some of the things that I said. If you've got some suggestions of ways that I could possibly change the way I roasted this coffee, um, let me know your thoughts. If you've got suggestions of topics you'd like to see me talk about or things you'd like to see me do on the roaster, feel free to share those. I appreciate you guys being here today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you have a great week roasting. We'll see you next time.